Hi again, everyone. I'm not using the lightsaber today because I think it hurts everyone's brains. Has anyone ever seen the movie Kick-Ass? Ah, very fun. So I'm really happy to introduce Sven Peters, who's doing a talk called How to Do Kick-Ass Software Development. And uh, you'll understand the reference in the next few seconds. So let's welcome Sven. Hey, hey. Um, I have to take these gloves off because my hands are sweaty under these. It's totally warm under this. So, okay, let's get, let's get started. Um, so, for those who have seen the movie Kick Ass, they know Kick Ass is just an ordinary boy who is, um, yeah, who's just to try to, to make the world a better place. So, he's trying to kick ass. And then he got his first fight and he got beaten up in this first fight, really, really, really hard. And I will show some pictures here in this talk afterwards. Um, but then he, he, di he didn't stop. So then of all of a sudden, Hit Girl joined him and Big Daddy, and they really kicked ass together. So what has that to do with software development, you may ask yourself. Um, so kick ass software development is also, we are all superheroes. We, there's a superhero inside all of us, and we, we just have to go out, into, into, into the world and kick ass with our software development. So just to set expectation here, this is my uh, one minute condensed uh, content of this talk. So, um, so who's, who's actually here to, to see some, some code, some kick ass code in this talk? Really? This is the only code you will see. You may leave now. There's a great talk uh, from JetBrains about Kotlin, a lot of code there, so don't expect any code in my talk. Um, so who wants, to, who wants to learn a new methodology, the new Scrum, the new Kanban, the new software craftsmanship? Here, kick-ass, yeah. I tell you what, there is no kick-ass manifesto, and afterwards you you surely will not get certified. There's not, Atlassian is not selling you a kick-ass certification. You don't have to do a two-day course to, to be certified. No, 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 no. That's, that's not what you get here from this talk. So actually, who's, who's just here who just wants to kick ass? Yeah, this is your freaking talk. Awesome. So, and yeah, and that's me with the mask on, with the kick-ass mask, but I, was, I decided not to bring it to Estonia. Um, because it's a little bit warm under the mask, and I don't know if I got stuck into custom when I was traveling with this mask, I, don't, I didn't know. So, anyway, so how, how do we do kick-ass software development? How, how do we do that to kick-ass? Two words. Use Java. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> the programming language is actually not so important uh, in order to kick-ass. You can kick-ass with with Java, with C Sharp, with Ruby, with Groovy, with PHP. I'm not sure if you can kick ass with PHP. Are there PHP programmers in the audience? A few, yes. Yeah, sorry for, for you. But um, I, so, so the last time I've, I've made PHP code, so it's a long time ago, so maybe it has improved. Um, but you, you surely can also kick ass with, with PHP. But I'm, I'm Sven. I'm an old Java developer. I have uh, 12 years Java experience. Uh, I work for Atlassian. We're making tools for software developers uh, as an ambassador. So I'm traveling around talking about kick-ass software development. If uh, actually you have a thing that where you sucked in software development and then changed some things and kick-ass, please tweet me. I want to hear the, the war stories from the road. And I have written some, some articles also on my blog, swenpet.com, if you, if you want to dive deeper into the topics, I, I have some articles out there. So also, if you think this talk doesn't kick ass at all, sure, tweet me. Uh, I want to know that. I want to have feedback. So what do we want to achieve in software development? Well, here's, here's my list, actually, what I want to do. I want to write better software. And better software means better quality software, and the functionality should be better. Uh, I want to have less overhead in software development. I don't want to spend so much time in meetings or writing documentation, all this crap. I want to want to program. Um, I want to have faster development. I want to move forward fast and deliver, deliver value fast to the customers. That's fun. That's what I want to have. And that actually makes happy customer. I want to involve the customer more. I want to make them happier. I want to make them happy using my products. And 
all this, all this together, I think, makes happy, happy developers. If you have a, a good team around it, it's, it makes you happy developers. If you would have asked me this five years ago, Sven, how do, we, how do, how do I achieve these things? I would have said, yeah, great, be agile. Agile is the answer for everything. It's good. So you scrum, you involve the customer more, you make small iterations. Uh, so, so be agile and, and, and get value from the customer, get feedback from the customer more often. That's, that's cool. That's good. Um, I, I, I told you, five years ago, I would have said that. So oh, what, what's, what's the state of agile in the year 2013, actually? Uh, we hear more and more people bashing on agile. Uh, more and more coming up, like, for example, the diabolic developer who says something like, compiles equals ship it. Yay. Uh, what is totally stupid, because we want to value the customer and we want, don't want our customers to test our software. We want to we wanna, wanna deliver quality. Uh, but a little voice inside me says, awesome, great, that's cool. Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, so, <coughs> so, um, it's, it's, it's like this, or the Dark Manifesto, the people from the Dark Manifesto of Agile Software, they're actually replacing some words in the Agile Manifesto, they're saying working software and not comprehensive documentation, and not over, so they take more emphasis on the, on the left side of the Agile Manifesto, or the guys from the, from the programming motherfucker, and yesterday I saw somebody running around with a t-shirt, program motherfucker, do you speak it? And they actually, they translate every, every, agile, every sentence in the Agile Manifesto with programming motherfucker. That's what they say. So they, they just want to program. Um, so the question is, is, is Agile ac actually dead right now? Is it, is it over? Should we, should we move on? Um, so here's the answer. So with every technology or methodology, Agile goes also through the Gartner hype curve. And at the beginning, all the thought leader says, Agile solves all your problems. It's good. It's great. Be Agile, and, and you will be, we will be doing good software development. And then people are adopting it, and they, they realize, yeah, it's good, but it doesn't solve all my problems. It doesn't really solve all, all my problems. So I think we are a little bit on the, on the downside right now of Agile, where we realize, yeah, it's OK, but we're missing, still missing things in, 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 in Agile software development. So what, what, what are we waiting for? So actually, we, we need some more smart people that tells us how to do software development. We need in the, next, the next guru, actually, who tells us, yeah, for example, Uncle Bob tells us we do software craftsmanship. Yay, now we're doing software craftsmanship. Good. Uh, but I, I, I actually tell you, stop following the next guru and kick ass again. Think about yourself. What sucks in your software development and tackle this. And don't wait until somebody comes to you and tell you, this is how you should do it. Um, and there's another side of it. Uh, and and I, I call this the legacy teams. So teams that are working on legacy code are not necessarily legacy teams. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, legacy teams are a little bit like, like legacy code. They are actually a little bit hard to refactor, hard to change. And if you change one guy, you doesn't know what happens with the other guys. That's, that's my definition of, of, of legacy teams. And legacy teams may think things like, uh, yeah, we add a new process. That helps us to become, to get more quality. We have made a mistake or there was something in our software development and we changed it. We, 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 we add a process for that to make sure this happens. Um, not again. And they say actually also changing stuff is too complicated. Uh, we have developed our own web framework and we won't go to, to Spring or Hibernate or whatever is out there. We stick with that. And it's too complicated to change it. You hear that from legacy teams. And they say uh, all decisions still apply. They, they, they have decided for years for ARMT as a build tool. And they say, we, we made this decision matrix, and they say, everything, everything was good with ARMT. So why, why change? We don't, we don't ask ourselves if, if we should change something. So I, if, if you happen to have a friend that's working in, in a legacy team, um, please tell him, improve and kick ass again. Some, some legacy teams will say, and I heard this also from some, some people, um, not here in Estonia, you're awesome, cool guys, um, otherwhere. Uh, 
that they say, uh, I don't give a but I can help them. So I actually put together four ass-kicking topics here. Um, these are my four topics I want to talk about in this, in this presentation. And these four are picked randomly. I just, I just picked them. Uh, I could have picked five others. I actually had eight or nine topics in my mind, and these were the four, four strongest ones that I wanted to present. Um, so, so it's just a random thing that I picked uh, where we sucked at Atlassian and where we tried to, to kick ass again. And I start with delivering kick ass, deliver kick ass software. What is kick ass software? What, what, what is it? So for me, kick ass software is if my customer looks like this. Uh, maybe not exactly like this, but if he smiles like this. If he's, if he's happy, if he's looking forward, using my software day in, day out, and he's, he's really happy and he smiles like this using my software, then I know I'm delivering kick-ass software. So, but actually, we have to build the right thing. But actually, how, how do we know that we built the right thing? How do we know that? Who knows the Microsoft Kin? Uh, one, two, three. I was expecting that. I didn't know the Microsoft Kin. I just Googled after software disasters Microsoft, and then this came up. So the Microsoft Kin was just an, uh, a, a phone Microsoft developed um, for the hipster people, so for, for the Facebook generation, the social media people. Um, and they, they, they developed this phone, and they bought actually uh, a company, and they acquired the company, and then they, they made a really big marketing, marketing uh, bash and, and, and put the phone on the market. And they spent $1 billion on it. And, but after 45, 50 days, they removed it from the market again, and that was a good thing. They, so they, they knew, okay, it's not working, it's laying on the shelves, nobody's buying that, we pull the plug, and that's, that was a good thing. But it was a totally disaster. So actually, how do we know that we built the right thing before we built the right thing. So at Atlassian, we have uh, one sentence for that, and um, this is fake it till you make it. We can, we can totally fake everything, and we can, we, can, we can go so far with faking our software. Um, for example, IBM, they made this speech-to-text experiment. So they said they have developed a software that turns speech into text, and that was decades ago, and they invited uh, some secretaries and some, some people uh, that, that, that they want to test the software with, and they set them in front of a microphone and they talked, and the text magically appeared on the, on the screen. But actually, they didn't write one single line of code for that, because they just hired a fast typer who could fastly type and showed, showed, showed it, and, 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 and they, they saw just what, what, what he typed fastly. Um, so, but they found out actually through this experiment, so they didn't invest anything in software development, but they found out through this experiment that this is totally not a good idea because the, the throat gets, gets dry if you talk the whole day at the end of the day and you can't say backspace, backspace, backspace and correct this. Um, so they, they found out this is not a good idea, so they, they didn't, didn't, didn't develop that. Um, so this is, this is totally faked. No, nothing really, uh, a little bit investment because you have to invite the customers and have to pay the fast typer, but uh, actually not, not, not much investment there. Uh, but even, even one step before that, you can, you can try your prototypes out. Um, and we're doing at Atlassian, our designs, our designers doing paper prototypes. So they're doing prototypes on paper. They just uh, draw what, what they think, they, the UX, the UI, they draw it and then show it to, to themselves. So they, they actually get into a meeting room for one and a half hour, come up with 14 awesome designs, and throw away 10 of them in the, in the, in the garbage bin because they see that doesn't really work out for us. A paper prototype looks a little bit like this, where you just click on it, and then it's going, going like this. And the great thing is with paper prototypes, you're totally not connected you're not connected to the, to, the, to the thing you did. If you do a, a, a prototype, you have invested maybe a few, few days, and then you say, oh, I can change that. But they just throw it away and say, okay, it doesn't work out, we, we do something, something else. But actually, all of us have already a working software out there. We, 
we all develop a software and we want to make that better every day. So we want to improve our software. And how, how do we know how to improve the software? Where, which, which angles should we tackle? Uh, how, how can we make the software kick ass? Um, yeah, we do that through feedback. We're collecting feedback from our customers and we want to know how cool the software is or what, what we should change at the software. Uh, actually, we want to we generate a kick-ass software experience. That's what we want to want to achieve. So how do we do that? Um, so I went to, to Heathrow Airport and if you go through security, you found this terminal here. And you can directly vote how your security experience was. So it was very easy to find. This is one thing. Then you can, you, it's totally simple. You just press one button and leave again, and, and it's fast to submit. I just push the button, leave. I can, I can fill out a form if I want to have detailed, uh, if I want to submit detailed information about my feedback experience. But I just push the button and, and leave. So this is a, this is an awesome, kick-ass feedback experience. Very, very easy, very fast. Um, so we actually had the problem in Greenhopper, or not the problem, but we developed a totally new board for Greenhopper. And we want to have as much feedback as possible for that board. So what we actually did, and we want, yeah, we want to collect feedback. So what we did is we put the feedback button just on top of, of it. It was down before uh, a link. Uh, on, on, our, on, on, on each Greenhopper page, but now we put it just on top of it so people can see it. It was very easy to find. And then if you press the button, uh, you could fill out the form and say, yeah, good, uh, very, very simple form. You don't have to log in anything. Uh, you, it's not, you can enter your name and your email address. You don't have to. And then you, then you just press submit. So it was very fast, and you see it's an in-app uh, feedback, so you don't have to switch between between tabs, or uh, it doesn't open open a new browser window. So it's it's just in app, and then you press submit. So very very, we remove the hassle from feedback, and so all these three things, easy to find, make it simple, fast to submit, uh, applies to this one. So we actually we got four times more feedback, four times more feedback by introducing this feedback button and this feedback facilities. So. Four times more feedback, that's a lot. Fuck. So how, how do we code with all the feedback? Well, we, we are developers, huh? We are hired to write software. Why bother us with feedback, really? We, we, we are doing what we can do, and we are good at software development. Great. So it's a little bit like the uh, Gmail team. The Gmail team uh, have this thing they call the shit umbrella. And the, this umbrella is actually, so they have and this, these numbers are one year old. I don't have actual numbers there, but they have had 100 developers and 425 million users. So you can do easily the math. So you get 4.25 million users for one developer. He will never get anything done if you get all the feedback. So, um, so, so they have this umbrella where the product managers take all the feedback, prioritize the backlog, and they don't hear a thing about, about uh, the customers. So that's, that's good. They can concentrate on that. But Atlassian, we're not Gmail. We, 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 we are not doing Gmail. We are doing, we, we were maybe uh, 400 developers, 350, 400 developers, and we uh, have a few million customers. So at Atlassian, we say everybody has to be on the front line. Everybody has to go on the front line. Everybody has to know what's, what's bad with our software. So they have to meet customers. We send them to conferences to speak with customers. Um, and and, and uh, we, we collect feedback. And actually, uh, developers can answer the feedback. So we want everybody to know at Atlassian how good our software is or how bad our software is and where we suck, also the developers. So we actually want to close the feedback loop and get personal. So what the Greenhopper team did with all this, all this feedback is they, um, they made a daily, daily stand-up for 45 minutes and looked at the feedback they collected during the day and answered it. So they answered it personally. And the good thing is if, if a developer is answer, answering it instead of the first level support, they say, ah, we don't do this feature. And people know, OK, good, great. Uh, customer knows that this thing I just submitted has reached the right person, has reached the developers. They're pushing back. That's fine. But uh, it has reached the right person. And he said, no, OK, good. Uh, now, now that I know it. So 
really, it's a feedback loop is very, very close. Um, and actually, we, we, you saw this uh, feedback form they had to fill out, and we went from good to uh, from, from, yeah, from good to uh, to awesome and good, so somewhere between that. So we really improved through feedback our, our software. And another thing we're doing is we're sending developers on support. So at Atlassian, each developer has to spend one week a year on first level support. I mean, they're doing second level support anyway, but uh, first level support, they have to spend one week a year minimum on, on first level support. And they sit together with the support engineers, answering questions from, from, uh, from, from customers, and they see, OK, this profile upload thing sucks. We have a workaround for that. Yeah, we tell them you have to go there. But if they come back to the development, Department, they say, okay, this profile, we have to have to the profile picture. If they upload it, they, they cannot find out how, how to do it. So we have to make that more easy. Uh, so they, they really they collect the feedback also and bring it back to the development. And also the support uh, is is uh, benefit from getting benefit from that because in support uh, they learn how to debug the software. So we are doing debugging session. Developers are doing debugging session with the support guys. So they learn a little bit about that. Then they'll be doing brown bags in the support where where we explain how we develop software so they get some insights. So it helps everybody. So you should really care about your customers and 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 think about your feedback loop. How is your feedback loop? How 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 close are you to your customers? So think about that and kick ass. OK, the second topic I want to talk about is to work together in uh, actually one kick-ass team. So actually, the developers and the, the support guys, they, they grow together if they work together. So they understand each other's jobs. So this is, this is actually one example for one kick-ass team. The whole company should become one kick-ass team. Um, but this is what we have, especially if we grow. Uh, we have different roles and different responsibilities, for example. The developers, I mean, they are developing software, they are specialists in developing software, and then we have the tester who are specialized in, in, in doing tests and finding bugs, they, they are good at that. So this se separation uh, is coming naturally, but actually it's, it's also introducing problems. For example, you got bottlenecks. I mean, if you throw everything over the, over the wall to the QA in front of a big release, they, they have to work very, very hard and very long, and the developers are just waiting that they come back and, and fix the bugs and throw it again over the wall. So, and then the most important thing is, I think, the accountability problem. You get an uh, accountability problem because you're not, you're not responsible for the, for the quality. It's the quality assurance. So. I just throw it over, and they find all my bugs. Great. But you have to be accountable for what you're doing. You want to deliver kick-ass quality. You should, you should really stay for, what, what, for your quality, really. And actually, at Atlassian, we are um, very engineering-driven, and we thought for a long time we can solve everything with, with automation. So we have automated tests and all this, all this stuff in, in place. And we saw, thought we can solve everything with that. But Actually, then the customer found, found bugs, and we said, oh, how, why didn't we catch that? OK, maybe we should hire a, a tester. So we hired a tester and hired two testers, three testers, and, and we said, OK, this doesn't, doesn't scale. In some companies, you have one developer and one tester, and that's what we didn't want to have. At Elastium, we have 13 developers and one tester. That's our ratio. Um, so the, the tester actually came up with a program. They saw it, and they said, OK, we're sending the developers on test. So at Atlassian, developers have to test the software. Um, so, so they are testing all the, all the small things. They are, they are doing that because we found out that the, the QA finds as many bugs in the small things and the easy to test things as, as the QA, as the testers, as the professional testers. That's the same. Um, so the question is, now the developers are doing all the work. Yeah, and the QA is just laying in the sun, drinking cocktails. It's actually not like this, uh, because QA is not called quality assurance at Atlassian. It's quality assistance. So they are actually helping the, devel the developers to become better testers. And they're taking the, the complicated things. They, they, they're taking it and test that, the, the really complicated stuff. 
And then they're helping them with tooling and giving them training and helping them to become better testers. This is what we understand with QA, quality assistance. So here are actually six tips how we introduced dotting at Atlassian, how we, how we became kick-ass dotters. So dotting is actually a, a verb at Atlassian we're using. Have you dotted this already? So here are six tips. The so first tip number one is training. We sent every developer on a, on a one-week training course to become, to understand how to think like a tester, how to be a tester, what's, what's important for testers. So uh, the first thing is theoretical training. Then the second thing is actually pairing. So the tester is sitting together with the, with the developer, and then the developer is testing, and the tester says, oh, no, no, I would go more into that direction and help them to understand testing a little bit better, to become better testers. And then we're doing something we call blitz tests. And blitz tests are two-hour sessions or three-hour sessions where we in actually invite the whole company, not only the developer, the whole company, finance, marketing. We say, okay, we have a milestone release and we want to test it. We want to really test the new features. So we, we assign, uh, assign tasks to test this, this special feature for, to a special group and uh, this special feature to another group and another group just trying to break the whole thing. So this is blitz test, and we're doing this in, in three hours, and then the QA is collecting all the feedback and prioritizing it. So this is, this is blitz test at Atlassian. Um, and then, then I have uh, three more things, but this is really advanced dotting. So if you, if you have implemented this, great, you're, you're good dotters, but then we, we want to we wanna improve. We want to we wanna also still kick ass. So here's what we did. So we're writing test recipes, actually. Um, so this is the complicated stuff I was talking about. Now the testers are writing test recipes. So they're writing, this is how I would test this, this thing. And then they can give it to a developer and, and let them test it. Um, and then we're doing split sessions, which is the opposite of, um, of pairing. We just put one developer in one room, one tester in another room, let them test the same thing, and then come together and compare the results. And then they can discuss it. How, how did you find that bug? Oh, yeah, I just tested it this way. So this is split sessions. And the last thing, we are, we're currently starting with that. Um, so I can't tell you what the results are. And these are bug hunters. And we, we have one guy in a team who hunts after bugs for one week. So he's the bug hunter of the week. So he goes to the done done column and grabs the features and test, test it and try to find a bug in there. I, don't, I, don't, I can't tell you how, how that impl implements, uh, so, so how, how this team culture is uh, changing through that, I, I don't know, but uh, I can tell you maybe next year. So to, to sum it up, quality is actually everybody's responsibility. And when I say everybody, I say everybody. It's not just developers that are becoming testers, it's also my responsibility that uh, the next version of Confluence is, is, is good because we are dog fooding, so we're testing our software on our, on our uh, we, are, we, are, we are actually working with, with the next version of Confluence, of, of Jira, uh, before we, we send it out. And if I find a bug, it's my responsibility to, to fire that bug, to tell the developers, here's a bug. So quality is actually everybody's responsibility. Let's have a look at developers are doing design. Yay. They are, they are very good designers. So uh, sometimes. Um, so when, when a developer designs, uh, it's, it's, he's just making this test application. You know, It's just for generating test data. And then he's, he's doing an interface. He has to do an interface. And it looks like this. Yeah, great. Uh, very, very engineering, good, uh, great. And then all of a sudden a, a customer says, oh, I, I, I want to have something to, to generate test data. And then you say, oh, yeah, I have they made this cool thing. And all of a sudden it spreads. Uh, customers are, are, are having this uh, nice interface. Um, but some developers are, are even better in designing when they think, OK, good, I'm, I'm adding some colors here to make it more pretty. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or, or doing a web page, uh, then it looks like this. I mean, we had very, very gifted, de gifted design developers with gifted design skills. So they have design skills. And we thought, why, why should we have designers? I mean, we have good front-end developers that can do design. And we're doing an engineering thing, so the engineers are, are using it, so it doesn't have to be that fancy. 
And then our customer says, oh, please uh, have a look at your design. Okay, good. Um, so we, we said, okay, maybe we should hire a designer to have a look at the design and say, uh, tell us that we have an awesome, awesome design. Jira looks awesome. Uh, but, but actually, he, the first task the designer did is, was uh, he looked at drop-down menus. So he had looked at drop-down menus in our software, uh, and, and I wanted to see how consistent we are with drop-down menus, and found these uh, different drop-down menus in our software. So every developer has done their own drop-down menus, uh, and yeah, it, it, it actually, he found all these drop-down menus and showed this to us in a presentation, and we said, okay, why should we have designers? Yeah, maybe that's a, maybe that's a good thing. Well, maybe we should, we, should, we should hire some designers. But it's actually the same story as with testers. So how do we, how do we scale designers? We don't want to hire 20, 40 designers all of a sudden. Uh, how, do we, how do we scale that? And you know the answer, we use developers. Yeah. So, I mean, we had very gifted developers. They actually just needed some guidance where there were, I don't know how many drop-down menus there were, 50 or something, 50 drop-down menus. One would, be, would have been enough. One design had, would have been enough. So they actually needed just, just the guidance. So after fixing the uh, ugliest part of our software from the designers, design point of view, the designers sit together, sat together, and they actually created our design guidelines to help the developers to, become, uh, to, to, make, to make design on their own. So this is what our design guidelines are about. So it's, it's, it's just enough, so you can grab just, just the drop-down menu and, and use it. You don't have to ask uh, a designer if you want to have a new button or something. You just do it. So this, this is our design guidelines. And then they gave us some tool for testing, so we can write some markup thing just to do prototypes, just to see how it would look like. So, and, and all this means I don't have to go to the designer and ask him for a new design. I just can just can kick ass, and uh, this means also dev speed. This means totally I can, I can move forward. I don't have to wait for the designer. I can do it myself. I can, I can, I can put in a new button. And if the designer looks later at it and says, okay, this button is not that nice. It should go from this side to this side. We can, we can still change that. But first, this is, this is fine. And then we send our gifted, gifted front-end designers or front-end developers, we send them to design workshops, like, like test workshops, where we, they become better designers. We, we, we ramp up their design skills. So to sum it up, developers are designers. That's good so we can move forward fast. But actually, if you, if you look at de what, what designers are doing, they, uh, they have their tools like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, and then they're doing their design and hand it over to the developers. And they have to translate that into HTML, JavaScript, whatever uh, you're using, um, and, and, and uh, translate that. And this is friction. This is friction. So we want to remove friction everywhere. That's where we want to kick ass. We want to remove friction because we want to move forward fast. So how do we remove friction with the, with the designers? Yeah, so developers are designers, and designers are actually developers. So they develop in, uh, they design in code. So they are allowed to change our CSS files, to change, change everything in, in the code, uh, to put in their designs. That's what, what they can do. Um, they are allowed to do that. Not to be honest, not every designer is happy with that. They don't, some, some of them don't want to touch code that much. Uh, but I think 50% or something like that, uh, that, 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 that change, uh, are allowed to change the code base. And then we're making, of course, sure that they don't break anything, so we, we, may, we make code reviews with them. But I come to that also later. So to sum that up, department barriers slows, slows you down, really. Try to see where, where you have, where, 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 where department barriers gives you friction and try to remove that. See, see everything as one team. The whole company is one team. We want to deliver, the whole company wants to deliver a kick-ass product. And we, we, have to, we have to make sure that we're moving fast forward and don't, don't stop with department barriers. All right, next thing is kick-ass collaboration. We have to work together uh, in, a, in, a, in, in, in teams. So. But who remembers this good old times? Well, where are the lonesome cowboy coder? Or if, we were, if we're still hacking on our pet project, uh, when we, it's, it's so good, it feels so good, I just can uh, commit the code, no merge conflicts because I'm the only developer on that. The code quality is 
awesome because I wrote the code. And I know every line of code because I wrote everything. Actually, the, the trouble just started uh, with a team. Yeah, really. We have to socialize. Well, we're not good at that. Um, so the trouble really starts with the team. We have merge conflicts. The code quality differs. And um, I don't know everything of the code base. I, I, I don't know what this strange importer is doing. I have no idea. So what companies are doing then is to, to in, in a, in a, in a, for, for social things, it's to introduce rules, introduce rules that helps us. So let's have a look at rules. So um, actually, uh, have a look at traffic rules. So if you look at traffic rules, like in Germany, we heavily have a lot of traffic rules. So I'm from Germany. And if, if, if you see a red light, you have to stop and then wait until the light is green again. Then you can, can go forward. And then you have to stop again. And uh, green light, and then. This is what rules are sometimes, sometimes doing. Uh, in comparison to that is uh, the traffic in, in India. Uh, if, you, if you look at that, it's totally flowing. It's in the flow. I, can't, I, I have watched this video for 24 times, and I can't see any rules. It's just, uh, but the, the traffic is flowing. Nobody is really stopping for a long time. Sometimes a little a small stop in there. So it's, it's flowing. It's great. It's good. So if we think about the, the comparison with traffic rules and software development rules is a little bit unfair, because really traffic rules what are they doing? They, they protect us from accidents. Um, they save actually our lives. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know the stats, but I think more people die in, in India in traffic than in Germany. Um, so, yeah. But, what are but, but if you look at development rules, they are protecting us from making mistakes. But we still have to, we, we always have to value, is this mistake really, was that that bad that we actually, actually have to introduce a new process for that, that we don't run into that trap again. Uh, we, we have to value that. We want to move forward fast or... But in, in some companies, they, they go like this. It's a process, it starts a process, it starts a process, it starts a process. And that's really, really heavy. Um, so my advice is actually have a fast and simple workflow for parallel coding. So here's an example of what our Stash team is doing. So Stash is our Git repository manager for enterprise teams. And they actually, they use a Git heavily, and in Git uh, branching is very cheap. So they, they create a branch for every task. And if I say for every task, I mean every task. It's not for every user story. It's not for every epic. Uh, it's not for every feature. It's really for every small task they create a branch. And the good thing is um, the they branches have a short life. So a branch in the Stash team has an average life of two days, and then they merge it back. It's a great, easy workflow. It's good. Branch, develop, merge, cool. Uh, but actually, we, it's, it's not like this at Atlassian, so we have something in between that we make sure the quality is good, and that's uh, pull requests. So uh, pull requests are a little bit like code reviews, so you, you, you ask somebody to review your code before you merge it, merge it back. So these are, these are what pull requests are doing. So let's ask, ask, ask a question here, the, the $100 million question. So why do you want to discuss your, your code changes? What, 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 what's, what's the value of discussing your code changes? So let's, let's have a look. Oh, Julie is pressing the button, and she says, yay, I want to have better quality. And that's true. With, with code reviews, you can get better quality. You can uh, see when somebody uses something and say, oh, no, you, 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 you introduce your, the, the naming is wrong here, and this doesn't look good. Uh, so so you, you get better quality in uh, doing code reviews. Uh, so who's next? Who's pressing next? Lynn. Lynn is pressing. And this is the most important thing, I think, Lynn. Thank you. Learning. Learning uh, is the most important thing. I learn all of a sudden what this stupid importer thing he is doing. I, I know of, of all of a sudden what's going on in there because I'm reading the code. So I'm learning. And I, I, I get some, some maybe new cool language features I, didn't, I was not aware of. So this is, this is a really important thing with code reviews that you, that you learn. And this is, this is really cool. So who's next? Andy. And he is pressing, and, and he said, I feel better. And this is so good, because you're not the only one who is responsible for the code. Normally, you check in and say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. If somebody reviews your code, you feel better. You feel more safe and say, OK, yeah, great. He, he approved my, my pull request. Awesome. Great. OK, who's, who's next? Steve, Steve Kahn, tell, tell us something. 
I want to blame people. Eh. No. So discussing code change is not for blaming. If this is in your culture, you have to change that or leave the company. Um, so, but, but the most important thing is that fast approvals here. So if you, if you do pull requests or code reviews, fast approvals is the key to, uh, to, moving, to moving forward fast. Um, so we have the rule, we invite maybe six people for our pull request, and then if we got two approvals, we are, we are okay to merge the code back. So we don't have to wait for all uh, to approve the pull request. So moving fast is the key. So if we, if we talk about collaboration, we are, we are actually uh, play, we, we are, we are, uh, at different places of the world, so we prefer co-located teams. We have teams in Sydney, in Gdansk, and in, uh, actually in San Francisco. They work, work, work there together. We think this is, this is a good thing, that we concentrate people at one place, that they can work together good. But the truth is actually is looking like this. We are spread out. I mean, we have people people everywhere, people moving on, and we want to keep them because they are awesome developers, or we, we acquire a new company like uh, SourceTree, they are working from, from a small canal island uh, between, between UK and France uh, and developing SourceTree there. So we, we are distributed. So how, how actually, and, and then there's another, another angle to that. Where do you actually work best? So is it actually in the office? Is it in the coffee bar next door? Or is it on your couch at home? So my answer to this is it depends. If I want to talk to people, if I want to collaborate fast, the office is a good place. I can meet people. I can just talk them, approach them. If I want to get something done, coffee bar or couch is maybe the better place to go. Um, so, so it depends where I work, work best. Uh, so we have all these places. So how, how, do we, how do we actually can connect all these places together? effectively. Um, and there's an old technology out there, and we love it at Alassian, and it's called email. Emails are awesome. They work offline. You can write on a plane. You can write your email. They, that's so good. Um, they work with one too many. I can, can, can reach many people by just writing one email. That's, that's so good. They work asynchronous. I don't have to answer directly. I can wait one hour or two hours until I answer, and, and then I can add people into the conversation. I just forward my email. So actually, we love emails. That's so good. You must think this, huh? Are you crazy, Sven? Emails are awful. We hate emails because of this here. My inbox, yeah, it looks sometimes like this. It's, it's just too much, too much email, and I have to filter them. So we know all the problems with email. They are bad for conversations. False and bad conversations with email doesn't really work. They, you get lots of spam in your inbox. Uh, it needs, needs always, uh, an email needs always an action. You have to delete it. You have to put it in another box. Maybe you have to answer it. And they, some people are really writing uh, epics in emails. So it's, it's really long emails. So really, we should avoid emails as much as possible. So actually. At Alassian, uh, we're using chat very heavily. So, so who uses chat here for work? Oh, that's uh, more than half. That's awesome. That's great. Cool. Um, so here's how we use chat. So we have, we have different chat rooms where we, where we uh, pull our developers together. For example, the Confluence developer chat room where all, all Confluence developers are in. And they are discussing code changes. They are discussing features. And actually, they, they have an integration to our build server. So if the build server fails, they get a chat message. Or if somebody makes a new pull request, they get a chat message. And everything is, is, is tied together in this, in this chat room. Or our design team, they are doing mock-ups. They are sharing mock-ups uh, in, in, in their chat rooms. Uh, and discussing about it. So they're sharing files in the chat room. And then there we have something like an enterprise discussion room. When I get, get a question from a big customer, I just hop into that room, ask the question, and then the good thing is I get an answer and I leave the room again. I can leave the room. I'm not interested in the conversations then, so I just leave the room again and I got not get bothered with other enterprise discussion things. And then we have something like a beer drinker or cat lover room. I don't know what's going on there. But the the good thing is you, you, can just, uh, you can just subscribe to the conversations you need, to, you need to in order to kick ass, really. It's just the conversations you need. You can just subscribe to them. So chat is actually good for, for remote conversations. So if we have our, our team 
yeah, it's 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 great. So I I can I'm 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 a remote worker, so I can connect easily through chat and get an easy, a, a, a fast answer. But it's also good for local conversations. So if people are, it turns out at Atlassian, if people are want to stay in their zone, they turn off their chat client, uh, and then they get disturbed by by conversations. So people are chatting actually, if even if they sit in the same room. And the good thing is. This person can turn on his, his chat again when he's, uh, when he's finished with his zone work, uh, turn on his chat again and, and, and see the conversation and just hop right into it because there's a permanent chat. So they, they can see the history of the chat. Um, and actually, it's, it's great for different time zones. So if the San Francisco, if the Sydney team goes to bed and had a conversation, the San Francisco team wakes up, can see all the conversations, what's going on, jump into it, and Get a, get, a, get a better understanding why some decisions have been made like they have been made. So this is, this is really cool. And uh, you can pull other people just in the conversations. If you know that uh, Thomas is, has an interesting point of view of that, you can just mention him. And then he gets a notification and he can jump into the conversation very, very easily. But the true thing is, we actually, you should choose your tools wisely. Um, I was actually uh, making a meeting last week with, with some guy in San Francisco. I was writing an email, can we meet at 6? And he answered me directly on, 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 on our chat. Uh, yeah, mate, that, that works fine, it's good. So I, I knew I, I, was, I was using the wrong tool, actually. Um, just so, so you should know that. Okay. Another thing where we kicked ass, it's like... Uh, we at Alassian, we moved from, from uh, we actually expanded from one building on, the, on one side of the street to a building on the other side of the street. So it's, it was a, a heavy road in between with a lot of traffic. And there was, the, of course, there was traffic lights, so we could go 100 meter in that direction, but nobody used it. Uh, they were just crossing the street. It was very dangerous. So it's a little bit like Frogger. Um, so we, we, had, we had to look at that and say, oh, this doesn't really, doesn't really is, is good for us. This is not good for us. So, we had this idea. Who knows what this is? Yeah, it's Stargate. Yeah, made of Lego. So we had we had a vision that we oh we need just need a Stargate so we can move to the other to the other uh, office just just through through our through our portal. So what we did is actually in the year 2012 when it was we uh, made our portal like uh, with the technology we had. So it's a very, very easy thing. It's a portal, so we just have a television, a camera, a Mac Mini behind it, and uh, we, could, we could just just go to the portal and say, hey, can you get Katie, Katie to talk to me? And it feels more like you have a conversation if you're staying in front of this telly. Um, so, so this is what we, what we sucked and what we kicked ass again. Um, so remove collaboration friction and uh, look, look at your collaboration and remove friction there because easy workflows means fast development. So keep improving. The last thing I want to talk about is kick-ass automation. Well, what are we doing as software developers? What is our job, actually? So this is, this is one definition. We are helping people to be faster, to be, become more efficient by automating their work. That's what we do. That's our job. But if we are honest, how much, how much time do you spend to automate your, your software development? Really, um, we, we actually never have time to, uh, to, to, we never get time to, to think about that, how we can be better, if more efficient with, with software development, uh, with our own software development. So who's doing continuous integration? I want to see all hands. Really? Not more? Okay. Who of that is doing kick-ass continuous integration? One, two, three, four. Good. Uh, the same actually at Atlassian. So our build were really not that good. So it, it, it took too long. They were too complicated. They were actually unstable, and they, they really missed the concept. So in short terms, our build really sucked. They were really, really bad. So, but actually, what we want to achieve is we want to fail fast. When I want to check in the code, actually, I want to know immediately, in the same second I check in the code, if I broke something. That would be, that would be ideal. Uh, I think we're not there yet, but uh, we're we are trying to. So we looked actually at our builds, and here are four things we learned how we tamed our, our monster builds that we have. 
They're saying and kick ass again. I think we're not there yet. We're not kicking ass in, in our builds. It still takes too long. Um, so the first thing is a very, very obvious thing, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit of shame that I, 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 I tell you this, is passing the ad effect that helped us so much. So we, we built the software once, put it into, into Nexus or Artifactory, and every, every other uh, build agent took, took the, the artifact from there. And that helped us to, to get down in our, our build time from here one hour to half an hour. That's amazing. So a little bit embarrassing, but this is what we, what we, what we found out. So it really helped us to, become, uh, to, to make our builds faster. Then we said, OK, we, we buy some more hardware and parallelize our tests. So that our tests don't have to run in, in, in sequences. They can run parallel. So we just have to buy more hardware and then run them parallel. So we parallelized our test. And then we had a look at our build strategy. Um, so we had a build pipeline before that was running a long time. Uh, and, and we said, for us, it works better if we, if we do, do layers. So the inner, inner layer is uh, building and unit and UI tests. So um, build the software and then unit and UI tests. So and that we're doing on every check-in. And we know that 90% uh, of all mistakes we're making there. Then every hour or something, we're doing platform tests. We're running on different, our software on different platforms with, against different databases. Uh, we're doing that then less frequently. And then maybe once, once, once a night, we're doing performance tests. We're looking at the performance. So this is our build strategy and works better for us than, than having a build pipeline. So just, just work in, in layers. And then another thing is look at your stats. Be a freaking data pawn. Look at what you can do. And that helped us also. So we have this different build agents that run parallel, and then we randomly gave away the jobs to this build agents. And we found out that, OK, the small jobs are getting the build agent, and then it's coming a long job. So the build is, is, is going to be longer at the end. So we actually did, uh, did the, the, the long jobs just, just uh, as, as the first ones. And then everywhere there where, where they get a free spot, the small jobs could jump in. Um, that's what we found out. Or if you look at this, maybe uh, look at your stats and see, OK, maybe I should parallelize this test to be faster. Because faster builds means less task switching. If I'm working on task A, check in my code, and two hours later I get the result that I broke the build, I'm, I'm already working on task B. Yeah. But the good thing is if it's just 10 minutes or 15 minutes, how long our, 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 our build is now, that you just check in, check in the code, you can grab a cup of coffee, talk to somebody, and then you know if you broke something and you don't start with task B before. So, Yes, more automation awesomeness, what we also did. So building things is one thing, but actually we're, we're going beyond that. We actually have a flaky test detector. So uh, we, you know this flaky test. Sometimes they, they fail, and then you press build again, and then they succeed, and you don't, yeah, great, I move on. What, what, what the hell? So we have a flaky test detector that automatically detects this flaky test that goes up and down, and send them into quarantine. So they are, not, they, are not, uh, they are not used anymore by the build server and automatically create a JIRA issue that somebody has to look at this, at this uh, test. So this is our flaky test, automatic flaky test detector. Then we have war boards everywhere. So we have this tallies, information radiators, where we show automation, automated data, how many builds failed, yada, yada, yada. Um, all, this, all this data that we need in order to kick ass, we show on this war boards, we automate that. We actually... Uh, trying to build now something like a Freud bot that is, um, is, is, if you do a pull request, the Freud bot makes a static code analyzers and it's a, it's a bot that automatically put in comments in your, in your pull requests and say, for example, here, oh, there's a magic number, please replace it with a constant. Um, this is our Freud bot. And yeah, actually, use your own skills. To, to automate things, to try to automate things. Use your skills. We are software developers. We are helping people to be more f effective. And yeah, we should use our skills also to, to, to make us more effective and keep improving there. So for example, we had fun building uh, this release button. So uh, we, we actually had a Raspberry Pi where we did it in a 24-hour hackathon. Just a release button where we now push uh, physically a button and then all the de deployment pipeline goes on and, 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 and kicks off. So that's also fun to work on this. So these are actually, these were my four 
ass kicking topics, deliver kick ass software, one kick ass team, kick ass collaboration, kick ass automation. But I just wanted to take you that these are just really just random things for, for kick ass software development. You, maybe you, you have something else where you suck and where you want to tackle and where you want to kick ass. Um, so, so here are our kick a little bit our kick ass values. We want to make the we want to have kick ass customers. Uh, we want to concentrate on a on a kick ass team. Uh, we want to have kick ass dev speed. We want to move on forward fast. Uh, kick ass quality, kick ass tail. But maybe maybe this is yours. Your 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 quality is much more important for you than dev speed. So that can be if you if you're doing uh, working in the health uh, business or something. Then maybe quality is 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 much more important for you. I hope. Um, so. I, I made this question at the beginning, and the question was, is Agile actually dead? And I said, no. All these things I just showed, they, they, are, they are Agile. We see where we suck, and we, we changed it. We changed things. And we, we actually have, have a rule at Atlassian. We want to be excellent in everything we do. We want to be everything we do, we want to be excellent. It's a little bit like running a triathlon. If you're a good cyclist, yeah, great. If you suck at swimming, you cannot win it. You cannot win the triathlon. You, have to, you, you won't improve your cycling, but you have to improve your swimming to become, to become a great uh, kick-ass triathlon. So be excellent. Try to be excellent in everything you do. If you see something where you suck, try to, try to tackle that and be excellent. Um, you may think now, oh, all, this, all this takes time. I need, I need time to do it. Uh, and and I, I, I'm, I'm running sprints, and uh, I, I have no time to, to change anything here. So talk to your managers, because actually, they're humans too. You can talk to them. Sometimes you can just talk to them, convince them. And yes, I agree, some, some managers are, are easier to convince uh, about your, your technical changes you want to do in your software development. And maybe some, developers are, uh, some managers are harder to convince it. I don't know. What, what we learned is actually also that we, we share our success and failures. And this really helps also to spread this kick-ass idea that, that uh, you have, that the, the kick-ass idea in your company. Um, so if you, if you change something, we are, we are blogging heavily internally. Uh, so everybody's reading what, what, what we're doing. We're blogging a, a lot of things and also our successes and failures. Um, so if, if the other people read it that, oh, they are, they are doing in this development department, they are doing this awesome thing, so maybe we should also change something. So this helps really spread the word about kick-ass software development. And you should, should, and this really builds also a kick-ass culture. You should build a kick-ass culture. It, it doesn't help if you're the only one as a kick-ass software developer, you're the only one in the company that tries to, to, to fight every fight. That doesn't help you. You, you should have some people, you, you, your whole team should, should be aware of things where you suck and then say, oh, I just, I just went down this, this way and, 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 and we suck there, so let's tackle this and change that. Um, so everybody that has seen the, the, the kick-ass movie knows this is the pictures from the first fight uh, of, of kick-ass. He got cut by a knife and then drove over by a car. But actually, he stood up again. He stood up and had a second fight and then all of a sudden hit girl joint. So stay up. Um, so really, it's stepping out of your comfort zone and, and be more awesome. We at Atlassian have different teams. They have different names. One, one team is the Muppet team. We have the Black team, the A team. And one team is called the, the Kick-Ass team. And they actually have a poster on their, on their door. So if they, if they leave the room in the evening, they see that. And they ask themselves, did you kick ass today? And I, I want you to, to go out every day and ask you these questions. Did you kick ass today? Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>